Hello, and welcome along to the stream tonight. Hopefully, you can all hear me. Um, this is my second stream back since kind of taking a extended break. So I'm hoping that everything's still working and you can all hear me. So if I can get a thumbs up in the chat room, if our folks are able to hear me, that'd be good. I see Maurice in the chat room. Hello, Maurice. How are we doing tonight? Wait, I'll just make sure that I'm not talking to myself. I'm going to get comedies. Don't leave me hanging. I'm doing fine. Beautiful. And Kim's in the chat room as well. I'm good. Yes. So today was the first day of both my wife and I working from home, as well as having two children in the house because schools are closed. So it was a different kind of a day, but it went okay. I mean, a couple of teething problems to be expected, but uh, on the whole, it it went okay actually. So I think we know what we're doing for the foreseeable future in terms of divvying up tasks and all that sort of stuff. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you are still alive. I mean, that's the main thing. Indeed, that's the main thing. So. In terms of what we're going to be looking at tonight, I'll let's get this out of the way because I'm, I know nobody's is going to mention it, right? So I haven't I haven't rebuilt my environment, right? Um, I just I haven't done it. <laughs> it it needs rebuilt. Uh, I haven't done it, right? Um, what I have done though, in preparing for this stream, if we go over here to OSS and live streams. Ooh, Arthur's in the chat room. Don't go anywhere, Arthur. I wanna, I wanna pick your brain about something, right? Uh, so yes, the reboot will happen, uh, Kim, at some point, likely during the stream. But what I have done, uh, just in the last half an hour or so, is I have been through and updated, uh, my instant setup scripts. So I try to keep these setup scripts up to date with where the current state of the VM is, such that when I rebuild it, it brings it all back to um, the the same state as I left it. So I've been through that and I've uh, added some repositories that we were using as part of our streams and I've updated those. So I should now be in a position. This is kind of why I was holding off and rebuilding it because I hadn't done this process. Uh, but I've done it now, so we should be good to go. Right, uh, have half an hour available. Okay, so let's, let's do this first then. So I'm gonna pick uh, Arthur's brain. So. I was asked a question by Maurice during the week, uh, which I didn't ignore necessarily, but I didn't reply to him um, because I kind of thought it would be a good thing to kind of talk about on the stream when we when it came along. So let me just read the question that I got from Maurice. Uh, so the question was, if one, uh, well, sorry, I'm assuming that this is not, I can talk about this, Maurice. I'm assuming that there's nothing to stop me talking about this question. I should, I should probably have asked that before we started. If not, um, it's a question from someone who sounds like Maurice. Um, okay, so Maurice says it's fine. Uh, so if one uh, has a GitHub repository with box starter scripts and one would like to use Git Release Manager without doing stuff manually all the time, uh, how would one go about doing that? So what Maurice is referring to here is that we have this tool called Git Release Manager. Yeah. Git Release Manager, which is one of the uh, tools that exists under the Git Tools repository. It lives alongside things like Git version, uh, historically Git link, uh, and Git release notes. But Git version and Git Release Manager are the two main tools that kind of live in this organization now. So what Git Release Manager does, for anyone who doesn't know, <coughs> it's a tool which uh, aids with the generation of a release on GitHub, as well as the generation of, um, as well as the generation generation of a set of release notes. So it's been going through um, quite a bit of updating recently in terms of adding new features. You'll see that it now includes the SHA of any files that are associated with it. It will go back and close off any issues associated with the milestone, etc. Now, 
I, when I use Git Release Manager, I use it in the context of a Cake build. Cake has uh, aliases for a running Git version. Uh, Git release, uh, or well, it has aliases for running Git version as well. But it has aliases for running uh, Git Release Manager and exercising the different functionality of it. So what Maurice is asking is, well, how can he go about using Git Release Manager? It's only sitting there until I release. Okay, well, well let's see. If, let's go over. Okay, so let's uh, M Kevin R. And where's his repositories? He's been busy looking at that. Yeah, that little um, chocolate packages. Is it a, is it private just now, or is it is it private and I have access to it, Maurice? Or hmm. Or is it, oh, is, is it this one? I maybe shouldn't be showing all these. It's private. You have, okay, so I, think, I believe it's this one. So this one is waiting for a release, I believe. Um, so what Maurice is asking is, well, how within his build or within his repository can he use Git Release Manager to... Uh, oh, a deal's just stepped into the chat room as well. Hello, a deal. Uh, so what I'm assuming Maurice wants to be able to do is he wants to be able to look at the issues that have been open, open on a specific milestone, in this case the 010 milestone, and to generate a set of release notes for that. <laughs> there goes the neighborhood. Uh, now, so I use Git Release Manager in the context of uh, a cake script that executes as part of that, but it can be used as a standalone tool. So the first kind of options that you have, Maurice, would be to simply install Git Release Manager globally onto your machine. So you're on a Windows machine, so you could use uh, Chocolate install Git Release Manager. Uh, that would install it globally on your machine. And from there, you could just run uh, GRM directly on the machine that you're running, right? The other one would be to have some form of uh, build process within your uh, repository so that you would uh, whether so you're doing PowerShell repository so you'd probably want to use something like Saki or invoke build uh, so that there's uh, synergy between the build process that you're using and the ultimately the uh, the the code that you're writing so that's kind of how I would do that sort of thing the other way and this is kind of why I wanted to get Arthur's opinion because I I'm I'm ashamed that I haven't done this yet, Arthur. I do apologize. It is literally on my list of things to do. The other option would be to use a GitHub action. So, so that's one option. So the other one that you would have, Maurice, would be to use a GitHub action and run, do the CI process as part of that. Now, what Arthur has been working on is GitHub Actions for both Git version and Git Release Manager. So in theory, you could use, you could set up a GitHub Action workflow that used Git Release Manager, and then based on triggers on your repository, whether it's the creation of a release, whether it's a, a tag, whether it's a, a commit into the master branch, etc. You've got lots of different options there. You could have Git Release Manager exercised as part of that build. So the main question that I was hoping to get Arthur to confirm was which of these actions is it? Th it's literally this one. It's you. It's this actions repository, and in here there are now actions for both Git release manager and Git version. Is that correct? I'll wait for Arthur to confirm that before I go any further. Beautiful. So in so what that means, if we drill down maybe into some of these examples, uh, this is an example of using. Is it an example of using GitHub and Git? Well, there is. Look, okay. So in here, we could look at the create one, which is the creation of the release notes. So you would configure a GitHub action that basically did this. So it uses Git tools, actions, Git release manager, and then the create task within that action and then you would provide the token that you need the information that's then needed as part of the execution of that task uh, and off it goes so that would be another option that you could use Maurice so it really comes down to 
how you want it to be done. If you want it on app there, then absolutely you could do that. Um, in terms of that, you would most likely want to use Saki or Invoke Build at that point so that you could run that build as part of uh, the CI that you would run on app there. Uh, now, obviously, Git Release Manager doesn't do anything with regard to the assertion of these version numbers, but you could, in theory, couple a GitHub action that is Git version. So use Git version to assert the uh, use Git version to assert the version number of your repository. And then as you can see here, you can then get access to the outputs of that action to then be used within the follow-up action that is Git Release Manager. <clears throat> Future enhancement requests, perhaps. Uh, what did I miss, Kim? Go and what did I say that needs to be a future enhancement request? Excuse me. I'll wait on that one as well before I go too much further because I'm not actually sure where I'm going to go next. I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, let's see what Kim's got to say. Dun, dun, dun. It's maybe a it's maybe a long thought process that we're having. You said GRM doesn't take a milestone a name, thinking maybe that could be in a future. Sorry, I should have copied that. Yeah, so the the one that I was looking at was the one that Maurice has just put into the chat room there. Uh, you said Git Release Manager doesn't take the milestone a name, thinking maybe that could be a future enhancement request at some point. So it takes the asserted version number from somewhere, but I, I, I don't think we would ever want Git Release Manager to assert the version number, but rather it takes the input version number. Oh, as in have it execute Git version directly? Well, that's an interesting one. If they're both available, mm -hmm. I see. And then just take the asserted version number directly. We would have to have some knowledge of what uh, variables you want to use, and that would need to be a configuration. But yeah, I don't dislike it. I don't dislike it. Uh, so th those are the couple of options that you'd have, Maurice, in terms of the question. Um, so like I say, if you want to run it on app there, you could absolutely do that, but you would need something to execute that build. Uh, so like I say, it would either be Saki or Invoke Build would be my recommendations for that. <clears throat> you could install Git Release Manager globally on your machine, which would allow execution of Git Release Manager directly on your machine. Uh, but probably the one that I'd suggest that you go for would be using the actions that Arthur's created. Because uh, it's, it's ridiculously simple to add uh, a GitHub action workflow into your repository. It's it's very simple. Okay, so hopefully that answers the question. I see a couple of ways, either by calling the API for the latest updated milestone. Oh, I see where you're going with the second option, as you mentioned, to run an arbitrary command, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. And then just based, okay. It would need to be the set. And Arthur saying, there is one action you need to run before the create setup action so that, oh, okay, so let's go back. Uh, if we go back to here then. So in this example, I see. So that was, Okay, so this is a standalone example. So if you're going to go down this route, Maurice, what Arthur's saying is you would need to run this step, which is to actually install Git Release Manager. And then from there, you would then be able to use the create task to do the work. Makes sense to me because that will give you control over what version of Git Release Manager is installed. Because you'll see here that it's specifying 0.10, which would give you the the latest 
0.010x version. Yes. So yeah, once you've got this run, you could obviously run any task because normally it's for me, I run create and then as a kind of follow up workflow, I would run <coughs> the publish and the close kind of in, at the same time. Uh, I know Arthur does it in a slightly different way and we actually pushed out a new version of Git Release Manager just recently, which allows Arthur's workflow to work, which is really creating uh, an empty release and then once uh, the release is finished, updating that release and that's allowed now through configuration in the uh, git release manager.yaml file. Okay, so thank you for that, Arthur. I appreciate you uh, being in the chat. So <clears throat> what I was hoping to get done tonight is the preparation work for chocolatey gooey right so for anyone who has been following along and i know that some of the regulars in the chat room have been active contributors to chocolatey gooey which i always appreciate uh we haven't actually released a version of chocolatey gooey in a long time right now there are lots of reasons that, okay, so I'll come back to that one, Kim. I'll come back to that one, right? So we haven't actually released a version of Chocolate Gooey in a long time. It's been over two years since we pushed out the last version of Chocolate Gooey. And since then, there have been quite a lot of changes made to Chocolate Gooey both in terms of stability of chocolatey gooey, new features added in the chocolatey gooey, more localized languages added in the chocolatey gooey. There's, there's lots of good reasons that we need to ship chocolatey gooey, right? Bug fixes, yep, there's lots of those a deal. Now, <clears throat> there's been, let's just call them reasons. There have been reasons that we haven't shipped a chocolatey gooey release recently right? Um, those reasons have essentially gone away. I mean, they're still there, but we're at a point now where we're just going to say, look, we're going to ship what we have, and the kind of one, one and a half annoyances that exist in Chocolate Gooey today, we are going to wait until the next one. We've always kind of been hoping that we're going to fix and release those two, one and a half, one and a half, two annoyances in the, uh, the next release of Chocolate Gooey, but realistically, we're at a point now where we want to ship what we've currently got, right? Now, the other reason is because Jan, who I was kind of hoping would be on the chat today, Jan has pulled a blinder, right? So Jan has been working on a dark mode for Chocolatey Gooey, which is something that's been asked for for a long time, right? So you'll see here, I can answer that question. I'll come back to that. Um, so Jan has been working on a new release of Ma Apps. So Ma Apps is a WPF framework that Jan is the main maintainer of, and Chocolatey GUI makes use of Ma Apps for a lot of its uh, functionality. So one of the things that has come in the new release of Ma Apps is a much more customizable theme manager. So off the back of that, Jan has started creating this uh, dark mode. So this is kind of what Chocolatey Gooey looks like today. Uh, this is what Chocolatey Gooey can look like with the dark mode applied, right? So this is a work in progress. I mean, it's, it's marked as such up at the top here, but it's something that I want to get shipped as soon as it is available. So to allow for that, uh, I want to get 017 shipped so that if there are any issues with it once it's kind of alive and well, alive, once it's live and folks are using it, if there are any known issues, I want to be able to do uh, hotfix releases on that and not uh, prevent the development and release of uh, this once it lands because it's just pretty cool, to be honest. I'll be, uh, 
I like it a lot. I mean, there's probably things in here that uh, Jan himself isn't happy with, um, but uh, I mean, there are minor kind of things that probably he wants to tinker with. So, and we'll see, he's got a checklist in terms of um, what he wants to still apply onto this repository and uh, onto this pull request. So, long story short, I want to ship the 0.17.0, and then if this lands and Jan is happy with it, we'll probably quite quickly uh, ship a 0 18 0 release of chocolate gooey so uh the question was was there never a zero four so uh what kim's asking about there is why did we jump from here to here it's a long sordid story um basically there was something went wrong and there was a preview no, no, it wasn't that one. No, it wasn't that one, Stevie. Uh, you are such a troublemaker. Um, the at some point, I think we shipped a pre-release version of zero fourteen, and as a result of that, if we sh no, it couldn't have been that. Basically, it was a it was a request from the community whereby they had or had they that's maybe what it was they had pulled a version internally and they'd bumped the version number to 014 and if we shipped a 014 it would have caused them problems with regard to getting things updated in-house so we bumped it to 015 to prevent any problems uh, at their at, at their end uh, so it was, it was a, a direct request from the community uh, to bump to 15 there was no other rhyme or reason to it there was no it wasn't that we didn't like the number 14 or anything like that it was uh it was a direct request from the community um i'm only blaming him as he's not here to defend himself love it right so one of the things i was hoping to achieve tonight was to <laughs> it's been two years so i want to try and remember how to ship <laughs> the chocolatey gooey release because things have changed a little bit i know maurice Zero so we're on schedule <laughs> let's put it that way we're on schedule uh i mean there was a big jump in terms of functionality between 13 and 15 it was a long-standing i mean we went through multiple different maintainers in those years as well oh it's it's a long history but you'll see that um that the usage of chocolate gooey has increased somewhat over the years and i'm quite proud of the fact that there's almost half a million people using it i mean i i i'm quite happy with that so i i, I want to ship this one as soon as possible now i need to try and remember how to actually ship it so the main and that and that that pleases me as well a deal it does it really does um now what i want to do is i want to try and remember how to actually ship chocolate gooey now in olden times it was quite easy right and what i mean by that is it's kind of actually where git release manager came from so oh uh, thank you very much arthur i appreciate your time um and thank you for answering those questions. If we look at the documentation for Git Release Manager, then it actually focuses on the Chocolate GUI project because when I created Git Release Manager, or or rather when I took over the maintenance of Git Release Manager and moved it from the GitHub Release Manager to Git Release Manager, I kind of used Chocolate GUI as the, the driving force behind the functionality that was added because I wanted to concrete how i was doing things into a process and that's what git release manager came from right so all of the concepts of doing an export doing an add asset doing the close commands all of those things came from what i was trying to achieve uh, because one of the things that uh chocolate gooey has i mean have i actually got it installed uh let's go over here and have a look at chocolate gooey do i have it installed probably do so one of the things that happens as part of the build of Chocolate GUI is that it exports the release notes that are stored on 
GitHub and it adds them into the about page of the actual application. So if you're running chocolate GUI locally, you have all of the information. So that's kind of where the export command and Git release manager came from, because like I say, as part of the build, chocolate GUI with a space ideal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so what a deal is referring to there is uh, a little bit of history with regard to chocolate GUI. And we had a conversation, well, we had multiple conversations about whether it's chocolate space GUI, whether it's chocolate GUI with no space, whether it's chocolate GUI with lowercase u and i at the end, whether it's GUI chocolatey. All of these kind of conversations go round and round and round. And eventually what we landed on was that it's going to be chocolate GUI with a space. GUI chocolate. We, a lot of some folks have said that we should have called it that for obvious reasons but we didn't right because some folks call it the chocolate gui as opposed to gui and they don't the the, the joke doesn't quite go over g g chocolate g I, no i can't even pronounce that right uh but like i say so that's where the export came from so we wanted to be able to include the release notes inside the application itself so that's uh, all happening g chocolate Right, um, <laughs> I've got. <laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Right. Um, so, all of that functionality in Git Release Manager came from Chocolate GUI. However, in the last release of Chocolate GUI, we added the signing of the MSI and the EXE into the process, and we use the uh, official uh, chocolate authentic code certificate to make that happen. Now we do that for reasons because when we run chocolate GUI, we don't want the kind of standard bog or the bog standard pop up saying that this isn't from a known publisher. So we added in the signing of the uh, MSI and the EXE into the build process. However, that process can only happen on a machine that has access to the authentic code certificate. Now, those machines are few and far between. So that won't happen at the minute on the AppFair builds. So normally I would have normally I would have uh, done all my commits into the master into the develop branch. I would have created a release branch off of the develop branch. I would have merged that into master and AppVair would have done the rest. It would have published that out to Chocolatey. It would have excuse me, it would have added the assets to AppVair, it would have closed off the GitHub milestone and all the things that uh, Git Release Manager uh, does for us. However, that part can't happen. But what I do need to do kind of manually, kind of offline, is I still need to generate those assets that are the signed off, uh, everything committed, everything tagged version of Chocolate GUI that also includes authentic code signing of the assets. And what I need to do is remember how to do that, right? So let's, that's kind of where I, that's kind of where I want to get to tonight. I have a rough idea of how that works. I just need to remember how it all pieces together. So let's go into our, I can't even type. Bearing in mind, uh, heart back to the start of the, the stream. At some point, this machine's going to go away because it's going to reboot itself. Uh, yeah, let's just let's just go on with it. Organizations, chocolatey, and chocolatey gooey. So we should be on the develop branch. Let's just make sure that we're up to date. Is it any different from the chocolate release? A little bit, a little bit. So chocolatey. Uh, uh, so. Fundamentally, the process is very similar. Uh, chocolatey, chocolatey, chocolatey uses uh, Uppercut to do its build process, but it also encompasses the authentic code signing. The um, it's, it's not, there's actually a little bit more to the chocolatey build than chocolatey GUI, uh, but essentially they do the same thing. But one uses Uppercut and one uses Cake. Uh, so chocolate gooey use cake to do its build whereas chocolatey uses uppercut but the build process is very similar 
just using different technologies to achieve the same purpose. But if we look in here, so remember to save on your indeed. If we look in here and we look at the recipe.cake file, so this is the other part of the thing to add into the mix is that the chocolatey gooey build uses cake.recipe. So cake.recipe is a set of So we can use choco bits to build a chocolatey gooey release. I'm not sure I follow your thought process there, Maurice. Maybes. <laughs> chocolatey gooey build uses cake.recipe. Cake.recipe is a set of convention driven uh, build scripts that is intended to be used across multiple repositories. So I personally use cake.recipe across literally hundreds of repositories uh, because I'm doing the same thing typically over and over again. But Chocolatey GUI build uses 80 to 85% of those bits, uh, but then it has a bunch of custom stuff on top of that. Chuck chunks of the chocolate release or parts bits a second so, i mean it it uses this the, the build process for both chocolatey and chocolate gooey is kind of fundamentally the same i mean we are running ms build we are creating chocolate packages we are pushing them somewhere so those steps are exactly the same one is in a uh, slightly older technology known as uppercut the other one is in a slightly newer technology known as Kick. But fundamentally, I mean, it's, it boils down to the automation of the same steps. So whether we're using Uppercut or whether we're using Kick, the, the build process is very similar. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so although we're using Kick.Recipe, we're using the, uh, the entry points in the Kick.Recipe to configure the specific things that are different for the chocolate gooey build compared to what cake.recipe will do by default. So an example of that would be the addition of these steps for signing things. So we've got a sign executable task. I'm going to try and minimize some of these so I can find the... It's not giving me the folders. Uh, so we've got a sign executable step. We've got a sign MSI step. We've got a uh, create solution file info step. All of these things are not necessarily needed for a normal cake.recipe build, but cake.recipe allows inserting additional tasks into the directed acyclical graph that is its build orchestration, right? So as part of the chocolate GUI build, we have added those things in, right? And this is where we're kind of augmenting that DAG with those additional steps. Now, I think I'm right in saying that by default, a lot of these things won't happen unless those certificates exist in the right place on the file system. So there's kind of a, in order, in order for an official build to be happening, the certificate needs to exist in a specific place on the file system. It needs to, uh, you know what I mean? There, there's some setup in, involved in doing those things. So by default, this sign MSI task won't happen on a normal build because those things don't exist. So again, running on AppFair, these steps won't actually run. So if I actually try running this on what is my development machine, those steps won't happen because I don't have those certificates in play on this machine. But let's look at the, the DAG to see what happens so that we can start piecing together what I need to do in order for the build to work. Uh, so the other thing I should point out is we are kind of using, so we are using some parts of chocolatey within the build process for chocolatey GUI, namely we're using chocolatey GUI to install some of the tools that are needed to facilitate the build. So one of the things that uh, Kim's still on the chat, one of the things that Kim added to chocolate gooey was the localization aspect of chocolate gooey and he added that in with the result of using transifex or or 
pointing out that we can make use of trans effect for chocolatey GUI. <coughs> so we're actually using chocolatey to install the TransFX client so that it can download the most recent set of uh, localized files to then include within the build process. <coughs> so let's let this run through and see what happens. So it's currently installing a bunch of tools. That red warning is something we can ignore. <laughs> Long story. Uh, oh, that's not good, though. Oh, that's not good at all. Is the build currently failing? Didn't think it was. Uh, ci.appair.com. Let's switch over to chocolatey. And let's look at, okay, so the chocolate GUI build here. Oh no, hold on, that's the PR. Nope, develop branch is building. So what am I missing on my machine? Have a look. Warning of error, invalid number. All of these are looking familiar, but I'm confused as to why they are causing a problem. So what was it called? That was called package operation result. Package operation result. Um, yeah, I see what the problem is, but I'm curious as to how those snuck in. So the problem here is that this is using a newer C sharp syntax for the declaration of what this is equal to i.e. the kind of the, the initial value for it but i'm curious as to how that snuck in so package operation result let's go and have a look let's go here too bad they don't have yeah, no, agreed. Agreed. It was just kind of, it was the semicolon that kind of triggered it for me. That um, source, oh, I'm forgetting which one's in. Common models. Common models. Package operation result. I could have just done a blame. No, it looks like it was me. It's never good. Um, blame. Mm. Just give it to master. No. No. But that doesn't really explain what I would need to have on this machine in order for this to build, though. I mean, what what build image are we using? Let's have a look at App Bear. App Bear. Oh, I can't see the App Bear. Is there? So we're using. Oh, that could explain why. We haven't tied it to a specific app their image so it will be using the default app their image which is likely now the newer one that has higher levels of 
.NET and all the uh, developer packs, etc. So that's why that C sharp, I want to say seven syntax is working. But when I build it locally, it, it isn't running. Hmm. Pro tip, don't do a deal. Uh, no, I, I. <clears throat> is it? Is it though, Kim? I thought they maybe bumped to the up there. Dot com. I only have. Um, I wonder, because I only have 2019 on this VM. Interesting. Uh, let's just have a quick look and see if we can confirm. Build environment. How do I find out? Let's have a look in here and see if we can find default. Default, default, lots of four default. That maybe wasn't the best one to search for. I can't even spell default this time. Hmm. Lots of information about IP addresses. Preview image. Just tell me what the default one is. Mm. I don't know. Then. So sorry. Um, I believe that was it. You tried to install the build tools in two thousand, but that failed. Could be. It's been a while. So, but that doesn't actually explain what's going on though, because if anything, I would have expected having 2019 installed would have helped the current situation because, let me look, let's read the error message again, a little bit closer, that's the wrong one. If the... Build configuration does not spell. Well, oh, hold on. That makes even less sense, though. If the build configuration does not specify build worker image, then 2015 image will be used. Interesting. Let me just check something on my other machine. I'm just checking the app there UI settings to see if it's specified directly. In there, oh, it is build Visual Studio two thousand fifteen. And I have the option to change it. That makes no sense. Am I, am I missing something, Kim? What? What is it? Where's the develop apps? This one. I don't think it shows you on the output. Let's look again at the error. Array size cannot be specified in variable declaration. Try initializing with a new expression. 
So it's all about that. And then in hacks.js, which one? That's the same thing. So that's a newer construct. That's the same newer construct that was causing problems with the package operation results. Well, similar. Not quite the same. So that explains why Hex is complaining about application parameters. Application parameters. And then 24, 22. for that one. Warning of error. Invalid number. Wouldn't need that, surely. Let's try this as well. Let's see if we can build it directly inside Visual Studio. This is not what I was meant to be looking at tonight. I was hoping to get past this part to actually look at how the build because I know that there's something I need to toggle in order to make the build work to force the build to run locally so let's go here and I'm going to open it in Visual Studio and see if there's magic happens in Visual Studio um, just had a thought. Just had a thought. Dun, 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 dun. Let's open this. What else have you got installed on that machine, though, Maurice? Do you have any other build tools, etc. installed? The thought that went through my head there was that as part of the recipe.cake or actually what step actually failed. It's the build step. I will be overriding the build directly. So no, we're not overriding the build step directly. So that would mean that, uh, thank you, Maurice. I'll take a look at that in a sec. That's fine. That's fine. That error message was because I don't have the Wix tool set installed on this machine. So the Wix project, which is responsible for generating the MSI, can't be loaded. That's fine. We don't necessarily need that. I'm going to rebuild this. Is this going to fail with the same error here? Release has got installed. Rebuild all succeeded, so it's something with the build specifically. So I'm wondering whether we are not targeting a specific version of MS build that we, well, let's do this. Let's find out exactly. Or Maurice, can you do the same command as I'm away to do on your machine? a little bit. I'm maybe going to have to 
go and read a message that I've just been sent. Oh dear. Build up PS1 for boss E. Can you run that, Maurice? And once it gets to the build step, can you tell me what the command that it's executing is? Because I suspect that the one that's being used on my machine is not correct. Um, hold on, what does that do? Come back to that. Um, what's happening here? Sorry, I'm going off piste a little bit here. PM says people can only shop for basic necessities, limits exercise to one form a day restricts travel so the UK is in lockdown um, stem coronavirus infections what's all going on Eckman Johnson Origin says that people of Scotland must stay at home. She repeats the limited set of reasons people can leave. So why can I leave my house? Let's have a look. Shopping for basic necessities as infrequently as possible. One form of exercise a day, for example, a run, a walk, a cycle. Any medical need. Hmm. It's all going on. Interesting. Okay. Seems like things are changing, folks. Um, yeah, so let's go back up here a little bit. And for me, Maurice, this is the one I'm interested in. So I'm running the four. O three o three one nine. What's your equivalent line just after the build step? If you could point me at that, that would be great. Um, Kim saying, I think the problem is a combination of the installed MS build versions and the MS build version supported by Cake three two one. That version of Cake didn't detect MS sixteen. I'm going to spell 15. So, so what you're suggesting there is default into the oldest available version as opposed to picking up and that, but then that comes back to what I was thinking in terms of do we want the, do we want to specify or, or rather we don't specify currently in the build.cake for the build step. No, we do look. Yeah, so in Maurice's machine, he has another MS build located in a different location. But that would suggest then that on this machine, I don't. Let's see, program files, MS build. Yeah, I don't have that version. Thank you for sharing that, Maurice. I agree. 
So that explains why it's not building locally on my machine. So the question becomes, how do we make it? And what I was checking there was that we do provide some functionality in terms of configuring the specific version that's used. Uh, do you have Visual Studio? I don't think I do, Maurice, no. Chocolate list, local only. No, I don't. I don't have the workload native desktop installed. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. So it would be good to answer the question as to what is required to make this work. .NET Core Tools. You've got quite a few extra compared to what I've got installed. Let's see if we can answer the question then in terms of what's needed to make it build. So if I copy this and do a Choco install of that, well, it's not going to work, is it? Visual Studio 2019 workload native desktop. It would be good to document that, if nothing else. Doesn't look like it's going to be huge. Because I suspect on my machine, this would just work. Um, I'm curious now. I'm going to have to go and read some more about the UK being in lockdown. Are you guys all in lockdown? Or what's the current state of play in your neck of the woods? Canada is locked down. How are things like groceries and shopping? Is there still stuff available for purchase? Can you still buy stuff? I know there's a distinct shortage of certain things in the UK, or certainly where I'm from, up in this area. Yeah, so that's similar. That that just happened. So bars and restaurants and gyms all got closed yesterday. Oh, look at that. Grocery store, so grocery stores are open here still, yes, but a lot of there's a lot more delivery directly now. Everyone is encouraged to be at home. Been that since the twelfth. Amsterdam just announced tonight the Dutch ban gathering to June first give mayors more powers. Well, folks are getting fined now. Oh wow, okay. Walmart and stuff is open, however limited. So that's similar to us. Certain things are still available, but other th other stuff just isn't. <laughs> There's just you walk up and down the aisle, and it's just completely empty. So yeah, pretty much the same thing here, Adil. So I guess it's just all over. I found bread on the weekend. <laughs> That's good, I guess. <laughs> Marisa saying up to 400 euros for having groups. Really? Wow. Per person or across the three people? Oh, Jan, we were talking about you earlier. Welcome along. We were talking about your PR into Chocolate Gooey. Thank you for thank you for looking at that, by the way. Thank you for looking at that. I appreciate it. We're just saying that I'm trying to get to a point where I can release 0.17.0 of Chocolate Gooey and then things like the dark mode and there's a couple of other PRs that I've been meaning to look at we can get them done as uh, follow up releases but I want to get this 0 0.17.0 out the door and I was say saying at the start as well Jan that um, my wife is now working from home now as well so we're at home, we're both working from home and 
the kids are off school because the schools are shut now as well. So we're trying to juggle between working, looking after the kids, working, etc. So Kim saying most stores are still open though, but no customers. Things that gather a lot of people and occupations that require close contact have been forced to close. Yeah, similar here. There's a there's a local funeral parlor that's now doing. Uh, it's horrible to think about, but yeah, and these and this is where we are, like doing virtual, virtual funerals. You can basically log in and see the funeral activity. It's yeah. Shops will have to make sure the measures are introducing to keep customers apart are displayed at the entrance. So it's the was it the was it a Danish shop that I saw, Maurice, that had red circles on the floor that made it clear that that's where you were meant to be sat, or not sat, that's where you were meant to stand when... Right, let's see if... I don't think this thing installed properly. Yeah, it took it out in the pending removal and then complete. Let's put this back in and then I'll go back to the chat and read. Also, Choco install this guy. Um, I tried to pause my work more than twice. Yeah. So it's it's so the way that we ended up doing it, Jan, is because my wife's working from home. I now, or the plan going forward is that I will take the kids in the morning because they 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 get or the eldest is getting work home. Like there's a, there's now a virtual classroom been set up, so I'm I'm Mr. Park, the 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 teacher now in the mornings, and I deal with the kids in the morning, and then she finishes work at lunchtime, and then I come online and start doing work in what is the afternoon that kind of ties in better with other folks who are in the States and Canada. And the intention being that I would then work in the evenings as well. So this evening is the stream. I'm going to try to get Chocolate Gooey working. And then I'll probably be doing work work into my evenings going forward as well. Yeah, there are lines on the floor at checkouts. Okay, so it's happening in Canada as well. The Dutch government calls this uh intelligent lockdown okay we've got those stickers on the floor mentioning to keep okay so we i haven't seen any of those in the uk yet but i did see that there was mention of kind of two meters now as well depending on who you talk to or who you listen to i guess well, that's interesting to see that error there hmm Interesting. Uh, what's that in real money ideal? Come on. Six feet? What's that? Six feet in meters. What's that? 1.8. There you go. <laughs> Rounding up their theory to two. 1.8288 according to Google. <laughs> See, the weird thing is here, like, if you ask someone in the UK how tall are you, they go, like, "Oh, I'm five foot ten. But you ask them how, like, distances, it's all in meters. It's we, we we chop and change to suit ourselves. It's so bizarre sometimes. Oh, <laughs> enough. No, hold on. This is a minimum until Easter weekend. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting WhatsApps from my wife to say what's going on in the world while I'm on the stream. This is in the US. They don't know how to lock down. <laughs> there was what was it I was watching? There was one of the leaders, one of the owners of one of the main. Uh, pub chains in the UK was basically depending on how you read what he said he was basically advocating that people still rock up to his pubs and you know what I mean 
congregate as opposed to listening to the the recommendations. It's kind of just ridiculous. I even got an emergency alert from the government yesterday telling people to stay in and if they need to go out, stay oh my. Other states. No. See, I don't know. You guys in the states have that as well. Like, the government can send out a blanket text message to kind of all phones. I don't know if we have that in the UK. Like, you you get like Amber alerts and things in the US, but I don't think we have that mechanism in the UK. I've never seen one. This is taking ages to install this thing. So this, if this does put something in the file system on Maurice's machine, it was in, I'm probably going to run out of space now in this VM. Uh, MS, program files, MS, built on a, no, still not, nothing there yet. You think the installation of has hanged, what makes you say that? What does that say? Doesn't look good. I mean, that error, that error is familiar, but for a different reason. Okay, fine. Let's try and do this. Visual Studio Installer. Let's go this route. I just want to get this to build. I wonder if the reboot didn't help. So, one that we were trying to add was... So all these are selected. Upwards. Is it this one? I think it was. And then that does include MS Build. Let's. We might not have enough space. Dang it. Pretty much only got failures when trying to. Well, that doesn't bode well. Um, I'm going to try and free up a little bit of space on my machine. There's certain things in here that I know we're not going to need, and they're going to take up a bit of space. So I can get rid of these just now. Let's just take these out just now as well. Let's be a little bit ruthless because I know I'm building, re I'm rebuilding this VM, so we'll just free up some space to let us. Oh, whichever one that one was, there's a lot of files in there. <laughs> and let's do this. Not quite as savage as that, but <laughs> not quite. Uh, that's freeing up a fair bit though. That looks a little bit more healthy. Dun, dun. So if this does work, then we need to document installation of 
we'll add what we call the, the native workflow. Upload. Yeah. It's not my way. Let's just stop feeling brutal. Let's just. Let's get. Let's get those ones. We're out with the red now. I think we're. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. So if I can get this question answered, what I need to find out is there's another argument if i recall correctly there is another argument that i added into cake dot recipe let's see if i can remember what it was called is it prepare no it's not going to be prepate is it prepare local release or something oh look at that what does this thing do? I seem to remember adding this and have it. Yeah, this looks like it's exactly what I needed. Let's prepare a local release. And did I add this? Change the argument name. That's less than useless. What did I do? Force local publish. You know it would have been faster to update the pre-release of cake and bump the cake. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'm curious about whether this is actual issue as well though Kim so I, I kind of want to I want to finish this process now but you're probably right MS build still hasn't added anything into MS build folder yet but what was I doing here Allow ability to force publish when running locally. There are good reasons to want to do this. You might want to sign assemblies as part of the build, but you don't want your sign. So this is exactly what I was doing and why I added this into cake.recipe. So what we were doing here was a lot of these things don't run by default if it's not a local build or if it is a local build if it is a local build we don't do a lot of these things so by overriding that with force local publish or which was then renamed to uh, prepare local release it means that all of these things still happen so i think what we need to do is once we get this working is we need to force these things to happen so that and that makes sense as well because it goes back to what i was speaking about before in terms of one of the things that chocolate gooey does is it exports the it exports the release notes as part of the final build that's generated in order to do that 
that exporting of the release numbers would only ever happen on an app bear build, on a CI build. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. So export release notes task is one of the ones that are specifically added to have those things in it. Right. Uh, Maurice is saying it would be nice if there was a choco provides exe command. I mean, that would, depending on what you're referring to there, Maurice, I mean, that would, there would be a lot of smarts that would have to go into that before that that would even be possible. It's saying it's finishing up, but I'm not seeing, I'm still not seeing... And file is published with package. So, I mean, it's not published, but I mean, each Choco package does have a file list associated with it. I mean, that's that's kind of common knowledge. It is there. I mean, you'll see in here what files were added as part of that package. So that information is available. See, I'm not familiar with either of those things, so I can't really comment on what they mean. Hmm. So it doesn't look like it was that one. What else have you got installed, Maurice, that might have installed MS build? You have .NET Dot, you have net core tools. What's what does the net core tools one do? That, see that doesn't make any sense at all. The net core the data one would be this one. The net core one would be this one. Individual components. Wouldn't be a different development pack that you've got installed compared to what I have. You've got the 461 installed, which is what I have. 451. Not seeing anything else in your list, Maurice, that would cause it to work on your machine, but not mine. Assuming you haven't installed anything out with chocolate. I know you've got that four six targeting pack, but I mean that's. Shouldn't be. Hmm. 
Oh no, you've got the older one. Oh, so you had Visual Studio 2017 installed and then you removed it. Because that changes things. Yeah. I wouldn't. I would suspect that that wouldn't necessarily. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's there's no guarantee that the uninstallation is going to remove everything from the machine. I mean, there's so many dependencies at that point that it may not be safe to remove certain things. So, yeah. I don't think it's a safe assumption. Did you ever have anything else installed, Maurice? Oh, I'm so confused as to what to do for the best here. See that? Sh mm. That shouldn't make a difference. <laughs> you know what? Sack it. Studio. Let's just see what it does. Like I said, I'm going to throw this VM away. Please just send me something else. Send me something else. Look, look do it. Yeah, there's nothing else really jumping out at me there, though. Oh, no, hold on. Oh, that one is curious. Yeah, you've just seen the same one that I have, Maurice. No idea what that is, but I guess we could look it up and see if it comes up with anything. But again, what to do? So the question becomes what to do for the best, though, because if enables the display of the UI after you install the language pack. <laughs> Is it still doing the same thing, Stevie? Is it still where we kind of left it at after the meeting? Dang it. So, based on the conversation that we had, do we need it right now? Do we need it to be a single script? Because that's only needed for the button. If we're just giving folks scripts, they could just be a separate scripts, right? Or is the button 
where you want to get to. That's going to be very cryptic for everybody else on top of the call. Oh, then doing a diff. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know. I thought that's what you, I thought that's what you were going to say. Okay, so so going back to this though, so we could specify the. See, I, I I don't know the answer, Stevie. I really don't. I mean, I think in terms of what folks are going to want, it's not the button. Or what they're going to want immediately, sorry, it's more specific, is not the button. But the button is pretty cool to do this at the same time. Um, what? I was gonna should I specify Kim in the cake dot recipe the specific version of MS build that we want to use and if it's not there fail the build <laughs> I don't think we gave the game away on anything there. I don't think we did. We just talked around it a little bit. Because <laughs> at least then if I specify the MS tool, MS build version number, and it's not there, then in theory, we would get a much cleaner error message rather than running around Rather than running around trying to figure this out, um, github.com slash cake build cake. Oh, that would be annoying if I did that. It's been a while since I looked at this code. What's the default? What's he, what's he put into here? Dun, 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 dun. Is this safer work? I'm bringing it out there. Don't press the button. Don't press the button, please. I'm warning you. Credit goes to the person who originally created this. Don't press the button. You mean this button? Do not press. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh, it is still there. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just gonna keep pressing it. Anyway. Oh, there's a lot in here, isn't there? There's a lot in here. Someone's put a lot of thought into this one. Oh, what's this thing? What? Clicking this button. Well, I've never seen that before. I've never seen it before in my life. Uh, right, where do we get to? Did it finish? It's still too sad. I'm not convinced it's going to be in there either. Um. Yeah, we shouldn't need that though. 
We shouldn't need that one. If she didn't be in the operative ward. I don't think it's that one. Build path. No, I see it doesn't. No, it doesn't. If it exists, return the path, otherwise, return null. Oh, then it, okay. Default, get the highest. So if the version is the default, then we call get highest. Get highest. Well, we turn a null, and then if it's null, it throws couldn't resolve MS build. So in theory, it would default to four. Unless file system environment version built, at which point it should. But as you say, it's not. This isn't uh maybe looking at um not I'm looking at the latest code which doesn't include this. So it could well be that this changed. I don't know. There wasn't much to it. And this was shipped three. Yeah, so it's that was shipped in three uh, thirty four, and the version of cake that we're using is not that. So that build tools didn't help at all. But I'm still. I'll be honest, I'm still a little bit confused. But I'm... I'm so confused. CDC, GitHub, organizations, chocolatey, chocolatey gooey. So just through a tool setting, you change that. So if we were to go here and tool settings. And here, and it's built. Oh, so it is going to default by default. Fine. So MS build tool version, copy that. And then in here, paste 
build. I'm just going to copy it because you've put it into my Arcana. Oh, no. But the question is, do I want to do that? That would move Chocolatey Gooey to be only being built on something that had 2019 installed. What I need to figure out is what needs to be installed to make it build. <laughs> is that not something that's documented? I feel like it should be. I mean, we all we can, we can, um, but that doesn't help answer the question, though. It doesn't help answer the question. I mean, Chocolate Gooey is still fundamentally an older uh, project that is referencing an older version of the .NET framework. So it would be good to have documented what's required on the build system to make it work. All it mentions is 2017. It doesn't mention anything about. So yeah, that build, that build worked, or or rather, that build got passed where it was meant to, or it was failing before. I see it. Um, so yes. So as on your machine, you're running version. Uh, what do we say it was running? On your one. Oh, you put it into the chat window as opposed to Slack, didn't you? So your one is running 14.0, yes. And on my machine, I only have 15 installed. So the MS Build Resolver isn't finding that one. So it's deferring to the one that lives in uh, whatever it was outputting. But by forcing it to the build to use a specific version, the it's finding the one that is here now. I thought we I thought we could get away now with running no, I've met that. Oh, hold on. No, I'm not sure if that's right, Kim. I don't know, maybe I. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize for doubting you. Yeah. So even that wouldn't bring us up to where we needed to be. Yeah, no, I was just checking the same thing over here. 
So that's ultimately still failing because I don't have the Wix tool set up. That's a different that's a different problem. So that's fine. And if we go back up to where it started the build, oh my goodness, lots of war warnings there. Um Uh, verbosity diagnostic. <coughs> I just want to see what it's now actually executing. Restore strong name signer. Totally stop that too early. <coughs> Why would we want to do that? Would that even work? You're saying .NET Core build. I mean, all I wanted to see was, so it's with .NET Core build, just a, we're not running .NET Core on this one, that's what I'm getting at. Yes, sorry, okay, so we are talking about the same thing. Um, Okay, so by going into there, it's found that one. And it's running it from there. And then it's running 16.4. Interesting. So. The issue here, I mean, we can get the build to work. I just need to do a, let's do this while we're here. Choco install Wix tool set. So that might explain where your in local installs coming from, Breeze. So that might explain that part. So the question becomes, do I I don't think we want to bump the build of chocolate gooey to take a dependency on 2019 because it doesn't. It's a much older uh, build than that. What I want to figure out is what needs to be installed in order to get it to build. So, oh, did that work? So if we run the build again, hopefully that should work. And then if we can get this to build, and build MSI, then in theory, I should be able to test the argument that I can pass in. I would agree, but there could be added as a commented code for people not having older versions. I like that. I like that. Yep, yeah, so like in the cake.recipe, just override it and set it to this. Yep, yeah, no, I like that. But I still want to get to build. <laughs> so is there such a thing as 
FPS 2015 build tool? I don't think there is. Oh no, hold on. There is a build tools 2015. Let's let's get it on this machine before this machine reboots. No, not in chocolatey. No, I I went I went direct to the source. No, I agree. So if we do this. And we download this sucker. Let's start it and see what it does. So this has been fun. So in tonight's stream, we have learned that I don't know how to build chocolate gooey. We have learned that uh, the UK has gone into lockdown with regard to the coronavirus. What else have we learned? We should do a recap. <laughs> uh, Microsoft build tools. What's that? Let's have a look. org slash packages slash same as the one that now installs oh it's just the older version of it Microsoft build tools uh, version history I see. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm just seeing that over here now as well. Okay, so let's maybe cancel this then. And let's try installing it as a chocolate package. Because then at least we'd be able to say, folks, try this. That build worked, by the way, so that's good. That's something. I'm not sure I understand the question, Kim. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I, okay, I see what you're saying. So, no, currently we can't specify that as getting a salty chocolate gooey, but on the chocolate gooey readme of the build, we can say um, if you want to build this, either install this or uncomment this line in the recipe.cake file. That's what I was getting at. If that makes sense. Ah, we have a 14 folder. Now, I'm so confused. Confused is what we're saying, Kim. Are we talking about the same thing? So, currently, obviously, through Chocolate Goo, you can't specify. Um, uh, installation of a specific version you only ever get the latest version so not through the command line I'm so confused I'm going to stop talking and give you a chance to tell me I thought it had been implemented. I don't think it has. Someone created a PR for something that's on my list to look at, but I don't think it's been... You don't use the... So someone did this 
which was implemented the so I haven't looked at it yet this makes it difficult but not impossible um, this was the ability to install multiple uh, packages at once I think so that, that was the PR I was maybe thinking of but that's also from a while ago uh, back to here run this build again I thought I could implement don't use it. most things I do through the CLI yeah I've, I've, I've heard of people that do that I have I'm not one of them no not at all <laughs> um, but yeah sorry that was another thing we can look at so Jan's pushed four commits into uh, this thing so what's he up to here What's he been up to? He's doing some stuff. Ooh. Add light and dark theme to theme manager. Well, let's have a look at that. Made ax dark accent and aligned. Fix settings background. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So, Jan, are you there? If so, I have a question. I'll wait and see if he responds. Yeah, what did that happen there? Let's find the other build. Oh, he is. We go over here. How? Let's imagine a scenario that someone wanted to create their own theme. So not a dark theme, not a light theme. Let's call it the the Gary theme. How difficult would it be to dynamically add? another theme referenced in another assembly is that now obviously i know that there's a lot of work in defining what goes into the um, yaml but hypothetically speaking would we be able to dynamically add another theme into that theme manager the god theme <laughs> Asking for a friend, let's put it that way. Ooh. Okay. I might need I might need to follow up with you on that. Because my friend might want to know more information. So uh, I might follow up with you for my friend. but we must set the template which should be used always. For the default theme, you mean, which was what we're doing. Add custom theme resource dictionary. Don't like switching between them. Oh, I see. The name of the task in the project file is the same as the name of the task class. The task class is public. What, what does that even mean? Seriously. Why is it still running MS Build 15? PS one verbosity. Hmm. 
I'm going to have to close this out soon because it's getting a bit late here. But execute. So you know it's still pulling it from there. So why is it pulling it from there and not from the version? Is, is this a issue with where manually reboot this thing. Uh, and there's a breaking change in pipeline which makes it easier to change to a brush. Template for the yellow. Oh I see, okay, no you're probably right. You are right in fact. So in order for that to work, we would need to specify the tool version and then provide. Okay, let's reboot this, test it again. And if we need to, which we probably will need to, we will specify that we are going to use. build version that one paint that's Let's open this up again. That style cop kicking in there, Jan, as I'm sure you're well aware. Style cop for the win. That's right. I stand by it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, proper should not follow a method. <laughs> uh, did I MS build tool version? Did I get the wrong one? Wrong one? MS build. Oh, the dead sorry. MS build tool version. So we would want this one. I think it was the same number. Uh, CD. C. GitHub. Organizations. Chocolatey. Chocolatey cookie. Code. Build. PS1. Verbosity. Stick. Dun, 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 dun. No, not currently. We would need to enable the style cop Poslan analyzers, which we haven't yet. Or have we? No, I don't think we have. It is possible, uh, Jan, but we don't currently have that activated. But running the build.ps1 locally would result in a failed build, yes. It's 
someone wants to provide a PR to add in said uh, what if I add the style cop extension um, I don't think so so where do we get to we were going into here and I was going into here Grab this. Like that, it's easy to go the other. So, if style cop analyzers is used in the project, then those style cop warnings should surface within Visual Studio, right? Because there's just MS build errors at that point. They're not. It's not anything special. Okay, so that looks like it's better. Let's let this run through. Oh, so maybe it's the. Uh, that maybe makes sense. <laughs> You're never alone, Stevie. You're never alone. Because um, that's something that we added. Don't we? I think we do. As part of the build, we set treat warnings as errors to default. So we then look at here. Treat warnings as errors defaults to true so yeah you may see them as warnings only Jan it would be good if you could uh, confirm that though oh. Oh, oh, oh 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 it's maybe gonna work he says okay I'm gonna hold on for like two minutes and I'm gonna test out the last thing which was argument prepare local release copy <laughs> everyone's far apart from everyone nowadays at least two meters or six foot or 1.8 meters that's what they call a, a flashback But even if I do that, I may still need to look at I'll get rid of it in here. Uh, where's my app where yaml file again? In this thing. Target is app there. Okay. Rest in peace. What now? Oh, I'm assuming that that's a is that lyrics to a song? I I I don't I don't think I would have caught that in a million years. Uh, see, I got there eventually. When I saw MJ, my initial thought was Michael Jordan. I'm like, don't think he said that. <laughs> I 
is this going to work? Is it? Is it? Is it? And recipe.cake by default is build.run. Create chocolate packages, sign executable. Both of those are skipped because the files didn't exist. But what do we want it to do if we're running a local build? So I don't think that by itself is going to change anything. That setting that parameter is not by itself is not actually going to change anything. So there must be something else that's needed in order to Oh no look, hold on. It is exporting release notes. No. Don't broadcast a message to the wrong Google Home through my host account. Don't. I feel there's a story there, Stevie, that you're not fully sharing. <laughs> See, we're we're more of an Alexa household, not a Google Home. I think the same rules apply though. And if that did do what I think it did. Where would I have put those release notes? Ah, uh, I wonder. See, I was worried about that for a like a smidgen of time, uh, Maurice. And then I realized how convenient it is for certain things, and I kind of got over it, I'll be honest. I've, I kind of had one in the house anyway, with the whole Xbox One with Connect, which was kind of listening passively in the background too. So, I, yeah. I wasn't... Yeah, for a smidgen, I was worried. And then, yeah. I'm over it. So there it did the export release notes. Target equals export. Actually, I wanted to get a screenshot of that. I'm not going to be able to get a screenshot. Can someone get a screenshot of that? And Or Maurice, can you get a screenshot of that and send it to me? please and let me know when you've got it so I can run this unless you're on a tablet or something convenience trumps privacy absolutely that's exactly what I'm saying it's going to get to that stage with everyone where it's just it's just easier to let them have all your data that's where we're going but Alexa Sonos and Google Home is that not a little bit over the top. The internal splash screen property is not used by anything. Um, 
it might be Maurice. Uh, it might be Jan. Uh, thank you, Maurice. I maybe follow up with a, a question on that one, Jan. But yes, I think we are using that at least somewhere. But yes, have a good night. Oh, it didn't actually run it. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, fine. Okay. I'm going to run this build one more time and then I'm going to ask you to send another screenshot, Maurice, and then I'm done for the night. But it's at least attempting it now. And then the final thing that I would want to check is... No, that's all we need to do. Because we don't actually want to run any of those other things. Because some of those other things we ultimately don't want to happen. Because how are we preventing that though? How are we preventing? Oh, we're preventing the publishing of those things just by not having it in the CI, aren't we? Sorry, I'm talking to myself now. What do you want me to do so I can start it? Uh, so what I'm looking for is when this build finishes, Maurice, if you can grab another screenshot, the same as you did before, and send that to me as well. I would appreciate it. So if I look at the environment over here on my app there, then we are not setting any of those things. So that explains it. Okay. I am happy, I think. And if we scroll to the end of... <laughs> I would never... I would never refer to Maurice in that way. <laughs> What I just sent you was from screen. Oh, 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 sorry. Okay. I was hoping that you would have. It's fine. I can go. I can look back on the the video and get it. I I wanted to compare what was the the tasks that were executed when I enabled the uh, prepare local release uh, argument. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Some people are too good to make them. <laughs> See, I can't. So I can and I can't because I want it to get it. I want to get a screenshot from this machine. So I'm pointing at this machine because it's my Windows machine onto my Mac. But I use Synergy between the Mac and the Windows to allow mouse to move from one machine to the other. But that doesn't translate into uh, copying and pasting of images. That part doesn't work. So Windows Shift S would work, but then that would be on my VM, not on the machine that I wanted the actual screenshot to actually be on. So, and though I don't have any shared folder set up, not between the VM and the Mac. The VM to the host machine, maybe, but otherwise, no. But it, yeah, I think we're good. I think I've got everything I need now. So, copy in Windows, open Paint. Yeah, that's a lot of steps. When I could have just got Maurice. To... <laughs> I'm joking, Maurice. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously joking. Oh, that's a nice picture that you've sent there. That's a lovely picture. I could, I should frame that one. That could be my new Twitter avatar. That that could. <laughs> okay. But in all seriousness, um, I think we have all the bits now in terms of getting a release of Chocolate GUI out. I, I, realistically, I think I know what needs to be done now. So if we look at the milestones that are currently open, 
then we should have a 017 one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bump this one because I haven't been able to reproduce this one. I know Pascal opened it. I've not been able to reproduce this one repeatably or reliably. So I'm going to bump that into the next milestone and we're, we're going to ship this thing. We're going to ship it. We're going to send it. Copy in Windows, open paint. Typically a shared folder set up from a directory in the big. So yeah, I mean, so I, so I have that. So there are some shared files, or folders rather. So um, if nothing else, there is a C Vagrant folder. So this is my host machine. But I would need to do the screenshot here, open and paint, save into this folder. I then need to go to the equivalent folder on my host Windows machine to then do a share onto my Mac, which is ultimately what I wanted it. So it's a lot of steps in there. Because what would be great if I could just do Snagit, which I've just done on my Mac, and have Snagit kind of m magically appear over on the Windows machine, but that's obviously not going to happen. So, anyway, we're off topic. We are at a point where we're ready to ship Chocolate Gooey, I think. So, I'm going to make a small change, probably tomorrow now, to the recipe.cake file to uh, pin it to. Uh, MS build tool version 2015. Test that that build, builds on AppVair still, which I, I can't imagine it won't. Leaving a comment for those that have MS build or or have only got 2019 installed. Uh, we'll leave a note in the readme that says let's uh, pin it to that one rather than the 2015 version. We'll be able to then generate a set of release notes. We'll be able to run the prepare local build, which will include the signing of the EXE and the MSI. It will generate a chocolate package we can then publish and off we go. Okay. Any new features coming in this year? Uh break your armor. Um specifically for chocolate GUI, um lots. I mean if we look at the seventy seven closed issues and then we can filter by feature, which is in here. Then there are 13 new features, including the ability to um, put the standout ones. Bunch of settings in terms of hiding certain things within the user interface. Um, you can do the installation of Chocolate GUI using package parameters now, so you can turn enable certain things on and off as you're doing the installation. Um, icons are getting cached. You can purge, update, so that's kind of a feature, not a feature. But yeah, the there are uh, caching of certain things now within the Chocolate GUI execution. So it's just generally sped things up a lot, uh, brought a lot of stability, uh, lots and lots of stuff. But yeah, if you wanted to go and take a look at the milestone, then you'll see all the... Uh, bugs, features, improvements that are being included within it. Uh, and hopefully there's stuff in there that is, a, is of interest to you. Um, but within the next couple of days, this is going out. Um, this is where we're at. I'm, 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 I'm shipping this thing. It's going out the door. Um, and the dark mode that uh, Adil is mentioning will be in the next version. So the 018 as a minimum. Uh, once uh, Jan has put some more finishing touches onto the dark theme that he has been playing. Oh, he's, he's added another screenshot into the preview now. It's looking really good, I have to be honest. Look at this, dark mode. I'm envisioning, by the way, that this is going to be another feature that you can toggle on and off. So I'm, I'm expecting, as he's done it already, I don't think he has, there'll be another feature that you can toggle on and off from within the GUI or from the CLI, so that you can control uh, what that is by default. So it's all good. It'll come, a deal, I promise, but not in this release. In the next one, maybe. Right. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna close it up there because it's getting past my bedtime, and I know it's an, even later for some of the folks in the chat. So uh, thank you all for coming along and listening listening to me rambling on about this. Uh, oh, actually, I maybe should have. I'm going to grab a screenshot of 
that recipe.cake file so that I can remember what I did. And when it's been screenshot, I mean I'm going to copy this text, which does work, from here over to here and create a new file over here. New file, paste, beautiful. Okay, that's me done, right? Enjoy the evening, everyone. Stay safe in this new world of coronavirus, and we shall speak to you all later. Bye-bye.